We were looking at the fact that there's a growing number of international migrants and that all the trends suggest that that's going to increase in the future. So climate change, conflict, all of the poverty, all of the things that force people from their homes, those are all growing and the numbers of permanent solutions for those people is not growing um, at the same pace. So that as a result of that, what you have is more and more people who are forcibly displaced for protracted periods. And it's very clear that when you're dealing with something like migration, the only way to address that satisfactorily is through cooperation. And um, that's very much at odds with the ethic in a number of countries right now, which is our country first, we can do this unilaterally. But in fact, with migrants, you can't do it unilaterally because by definition, they're moving and they're crossing borders. These things have to be thought out across borders. So, for example, climate change, you know, the, the results of that are not respecting national borders. There have to be solutions to that that cross borders. But it's quite clear that there needs to be cooperation between states as well. And the kind of cooperation we're seeing now is cooperation to exclude people from protection, to keep, to stop them in their journeys, to marginalize them. And actually, people need to move if they're moving, you know, and that's what forcibly displaced migration is all about. So the cooperation really ought to be how to facilitate that, how to protect people, how to integrate them into communities, how to develop permanent solutions to, for their situation, for people that are stuck in places for years and years, protracted refugees, for example. Could you make labor visas available to them, or family-based visas, or other types of humanitarian visas as kind of a new permanent solution to their situations? So that's the kind of advocacy I think that the church is doing. I mean, I think that solidarity is a very crucial part of this too, and there needs to be solidarity with migrants. You need to start from the perspective of migrants. People-centered work is, the Catholic approach, which is that you never forget the people at the heart of this phenomenon, and you recognize that those people have gifts, contributions to make, knowledge, and you know, the Holy Father has said that the solution to, to many of these situations is act, actually starts at the peripheries. You start at the place of communities that are most affected by these realities and you build solutions based on their experiences. On work, of course, the big trend is that um, is automation and robotics and advances in technology that are starting to change the nature of work. Work activities can be turned into algorithms and as a result can be automated. The pace of that is very fast and the future of work as a result is very uncertain. And of course, for migrants, who do a lot of service sector work, but also work in agriculture, work in manufacturing, it's quite clear that the impact of this, um, this trend is gonna be very extreme. And so you have to start thinking then about how you train them and reskill them and prepare them for the global labor market, which is changing very rapidly. And that's going to, um, that's going to continue and it's going to advance and we're not sure exactly what jobs in the future are going to look like. Um, what we are sure of, though, from a Catholic perspective, is that that's a process that ought to serve human beings. It ought to benefit human beings. It shouldn't subjugate them. It shouldn't replace them. It's something that ought to facilitate human dignity and promote it. Mm -hmm.